Hello. Buddha, what's up, my man? What's cracking? Shit, man, I want to jump right into it, man. I was just listening to our our, uh, our first interview, and I kind of want to elaborate on a few things. And there was a few things that I wanted to ask you back then, but we just didn't get to it. So, shit, I'll ask you now. Um, now, we talked about the first time, uh, you know, Crips and Bloods first made an appearance in Little Rock. But before Crips and Bloods, uh, I'm assuming there were other gangs. Did you guys have, like, a gang influence from, like, the Midwest or anything like that before Crips and Bloods came along? It was just guys that grew up in the neighborhood that was running together. Okay. You know, like I said at first, it wasn't, you know, uh, we weren't influenced by nothing. It was just we grew up together, going to school together. It was like West End ran with West End, the East End ran with the East End, the South End ran with the South End. It was more along you the lines of what side of the town you were from, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. right. And then, like I said, when the gangs did hit, whatever neighborhood claimed what was that, that's what it was. South side, whatever, yeah. east side, this. Well, I mean, we was, the Crips was in South Central, and then you had some to the east. But Wolf was in the middle of, of everything. Mm. You know what I mean? It was bloods, and we was in the middle. Like right now, it's nothing changed. This is a blood city. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like L.A. is a good city, it's just vice versa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, shit, um, even before uh, gangs got to Little Rock, did you guys have, were you guys influenced at all by movies like Colors and, you know, things like that that came out in the late 80s? You know, uh, some, some were and some wasn't. The older guys, I, I don't think was. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, yeah. but there's a lot of cats that were. Because remind everybody again, um, when did you pretty much start your hood or get, you know, get put on? or not? I know you didn't really get put on your OG, but when did you start gangbanging? Yeah. Late 86. Yeah, so we're talking yeah, Arkansas. Yeah. This is Arkansas. This is not LA 86. This is Arkansas 86. So. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Late 86, early 87. And All the way to 2020, deal with it. Yeah. And that's that's crazy because it, it, for anyone who doesn't remember, and I'll, I will repeat a few things from the last interview, and I would definitely encourage you all to check out um, the archive, Super Audio Network. Type in Buddha B O O D A and check out the first interview. But um, in 1993, the number of homicides in Little Rock sparked to 76. Now I know that doesn't sound like a lot to someone living in L.A. or New York or some Chicago, but 76 for a little town of Little Rock, you know, of 200,000 people, or whatever. That's that. You guys were the murder capital. I looked it up. You guys were officially the murder capital of the, uh, you know, the year, that year. So we're talking. This guy goes back. I'm giving everybody kind of a little backstory to to how far mm -hmm. you actually go back. And everybody remembers the banging on uh, little banging in Little Rock documentary from the '90s, '94, whatever. He was not in that. He chose not to participate. Um, and he did mention that you know it made the city look bad. He didn't really like how you know how it made, not his. You know that, that that movie actually was filmed in '92. '92. 93 didn't come out to 94. Yeah, it was actually filmed in late 92, early 93. They didn't release it to 94. Yes, okay, so 90, it came out in 94, that's right. And you didn't really, you didn't like how it portrayed, you know what I'm saying, the city, I, um, or not, there were necessarily gangs in your city, right? Yes, yeah, we still fucked up behind it right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure White Flight was a motherfucker, which you got to experience. You were right in the middle of that. White people just bouncing. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of you know uh, that that's um that's uh kind of give everybody a background who didn't get to check out the first interview. But uh, to continue, since we last spoke, we did mention Takashi Six Nine back then. And you didn't really have any comments on it. But since we last talked, this motherfucker is officially out of jail. He's fucking living his best life, getting five hundred million views. In hindsight, man, I got to ask you again, after everything, even including him being out, still talking shit, still being the same type of person, what, you being in the music industry, what are your thoughts of this dude? Fucking, fuck, 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 fucking, fuck, <laughs> fuck that nigga, cuz, for real, that's yeah. what it is, man, fuck that nigga, man, he's still a rat. Yeah, I don't give a fuck how much money how much money he got when he lay down and wake up in the motherfucking morning and look in the mirror. He's a bitch ass motherfucking rat. Yeah, period. Man. Yeah. And, and, and God said a fool and his money will soon be separated. Oh yeah. I don't see this lasting 
too much longer. I mean, it's it's all a fun and games, right? It's a show right now for everybody. The only I think more people know him for his antics than they do his music. And then you know he's probably working for them, them, them puppet masters. Oh, he one hundred percent is with the boys. I mean, he he like, it's, it's confirmed. Uh, agents are around him all the time. He feeds information. He literally went on on live and said one of his homeboys shot at somebody back in the day. Like he's oh yeah, such and such. He shot at him, right? And I'm like, damn, like just giving the fed. Just here you go, here you go. Here's a little piece for you right there. Go follow that lead. Yeah, cause soul is so. That's about, yep. soul, that's me. that's probably the best way to s- describe it. He sold his soul, man. Damn. Yeah, so, yeah. He's at the point of no return now. So what else can he do? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's over with. Mm. And all barbecues come to an end. So that red motherfucker, he ain't got too much long. I love Southern uh, fucking sayings, dog. My family's from the South, and those motherfuckers drop some sands on you. I love that shit. He said the barbecue always is. That's All cool. barbecue is coming to an end. Which one you know you can keep going forever? Real talk, man. Mm. It don't happen like that. Have you ever been snitched on? I hope not. Oh, okay. So not that you know of. <laughs> I'm not pretty sure. Yeah, oh damn. Yeah. Oof. But it wasn't brought to my attention. Like my homie at Nasty, I feed till my nigga smoke blast. Nigga off from Wolf Street, home of Bobby Banks, some a low down nigga Freaky Frank. Cause I'm from Wolf Street, when we shoot, don't talk. Got my whole hood through the fucking T box. Cause Wolf Street, what's cracking gang land, blue trucks, blue rags, some of niggas with the gas. Wolf Street, we got the park with the cops. The Christmas sister was a little rap. Nigga off from Wolf Street, and we all say cuz in the rock down, being full of blue. Wood Street, Cadillac on the swing. I'm throwing on my hook cause I'm a prank. Wood Street, C's up the 23rd. Rest in peace to my cousin Edward Bird. Okay? Wood Street, from the west to the south. What's up above a hump? No one talking about. Wood Street, the shouts out to the young. Cause all the young stay run from. What it do? Wood Street, 19 to the alley. We all talk about we from Cali. And we from Wood Street, home of Lil Crazy. Place, man, I swear the hood raised me. Wolf Street, right by the fairground. And Mr. School Cubs started on the playground. Wolf Street, what's up the hair crumb? 75 D bird and my nigga grip one. Wolf Street, good nutty sea walk. A lot of y'all niggas just talking. We from Wolf Street, what's the grills, what's the stage? Little kitty died, we get AK and Adi Ray. Wolf Street, yo, yo, I feel the seat. Can't forget, bam, bam, grip, K and DD. Wolf Street, let me hit that. I just got it. Man, let me hit that shit. Yeah, man, I got it. I'm from Wolf Street. Brass Wheels was the spot. I can tell you all the homies on the block that got shot. Let the Wolf Street. What about Central High on the block at QPs throwing seeds in the sky? I'm from Wolf Street. 19 on the hill. Look, Dave, Vic, Richard, Mr. Grass, I'm a feel. Good Rock. What's cracking Oak Street? Monroe, John Barrow, and my niggas from the East. Good Rock. To my niggas on Fifth West Side by Route. How the park by the head. From Wolf Street. Little Rock, where I'm at, what's up, mom? Mini Pizza, yo, a D-Max. Wolf Street, K, Holla, Crip, Six, Ike, Boy, Lil' Side, True, Berry, Murder, Chris. Wolf Street, Uzi, Man, Shotsy, Ty, Big Block, CJ, and my niggas doing time. Someone we didn't get to talk about last time um, was a rapper by the name of Pop Smoke. Pretty sure you're familiar with him. New York rapper, Crip rapper. He was on the come up, young dude, 20 years old. Gets killed out here in LA at a random party. They just arrested the people, apparently. Um, but as, as as you being a musician, somebody in the entertainment business yourself, and you have gang ties, what are your thoughts on how gangster rappers with gang ties should move? You know, when they're out there entertaining from state to state, city to city, they should move accordingly. Explain that. I mean, you should move like a you should move like an artist move. You should move. Like you're still in the street, you know what I mean. You know you're in the studio now. You ain't out there doing all that shit. You're a studio gangster now. You're not the same motherfucker you was when you was out here trying to get out the motherfucking streets. 
So therefore, you shouldn't put yourself in that predicament, if that makes sense. Hmm. So does does someone, do you, let's say you come to L.A., do you check mm-hmm. with the lake, local neighborhoods? Do you make sure you connect with somebody? Well, you have L.A. ties, so that's kind of an easy one. But let's say you go to yeah. Kentucky. Let's say you go to Kentucky. You have a show in Louisville, Kentucky, and it's you know mm-hmm. there's gangs everywhere. Like, do you is there somebody you call up? Hey, me and my boys are in town. Blah blah blah. Or do you just kind of do your thing, go and get get out. Shit, I ain't heard no motherfucker calling me coming to Little Rock. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about with the dirty fingernails. They close the holiday in the city. So they have no. Okay. I want the same respect. That's how I feel about that. There you go. Okay. You feel? We'll just keep it a bean. Yeah. If not, they would check in with me, yeah, of course. I show the same respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I ain't no motherfucker checked in with me. I'm my homies. If they did, they ain't let me know nothing about it. And that's fucked up. Mm. <laughs> yeah. They gotta let me. And what would you do? What would I do? Would if, you check in? See, I'm not an active gang member. I never have been. Um, but, no, I, I travel freely. I, I just go everywhere and I... Um, like if I was let's you know what if I was coming to Little Rock, off top I'd be like mm-hmm. I hit up Gargamel, dirty fingernails, take me take me around, but it's not necessarily checking in. You know what I mean? I'd be, hey, take me to the spots. No, Where's the weed? Checking. You know, stuff like that. Yeah, that's all. That's all they're talking about for is tapping in. Mm-hmm. They're not talking about oh man, this can I get to you? Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. you tap in with the homies, let's right? show you a good time, let's mm-hmm. show you the city. Yeah, let's go eat. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So we're on the same page. Yeah. So when I go right there, I'm going to hit you up so we can do that. Exactly, exactly. You already know. It's a done deal, my man. It's a done deal. you you never been out to L.A., right? I think you said you were going to come out here or something? Yeah, you know I've been there. Oh, okay, okay. I know you had connections and all your your you know all your boys are from. Okay, cool. So never mind. You have been out here. I'm a family. That's, that's right. My auntie, sisters, nephews, cousins. Oh, okay. Shit, you got a place to you got you got to uh, we'll definitely take you around out here. Make sure you hit me up next time you come out to LA, man. I'll show you all the spots, the best weed spots, all that good stuff. Have, already, have already. you been out here since weed was like a, was legal and you can actually walk into a store and grab that shit? No, it's been a minute. Oh. I want to go to Fast Stop. Ooh, you gonna love it, homie. Ah, it's <laughs> you're gonna feel like a kid in the candy store, dog. <laughs> ah. It's a dream, man. It's a dream. Yeah. We, we have it so good here. What are the weed laws like in, in, in Arkansas? It's not recreational. You got to have a car right now. Okay. So they're yeah, you got to have a car. Okay. Yeah. You know, we, we slow with the dough. Yeah. South. It's a South. I mean, yeah. They're, south and drugs. Just forget about it. Yeah. Little Rock, when you got when the gang started getting there, like when when Crips started popping, did they jump right into the gang uh, into the gun fights or did it progress? You know what I'm saying from fist fights to you know because in L.A. Uh, most OGs would tell you you know in the '69, '70, '71 it was fist fights. Maybe somebody bring a stick, a baseball bat or something, but the gun play really got cracking like in the mid to s- late '70s. Did you guys jump right into the gunplay because you guys are kind of behind us, or did you guys kind of gradually go into the gunplay? Uh, we came in the gunplay off the rip with it. Mm. Yeah, off the rip with it. There was no plan about that. All the fighting, we had already did that before the Crip and the Blood shit. No. So when the Crip and the Blood shit came and they seen Colors, it was going down. So Colors did, and like I said, influenced a few. Mm. But a lot of them was already gun slingers. Mm. You know, okay. so that's how that went. Yeah, off top, going back to what I said earlier, 76 murders in one year in a small city. Uh, keep in mind, this is a small city. I know if you're in Chicago right now, that's a fucking afternoon, you know, but we're talking to <laughs> small, you know, we're talking to small city, man. Oh, yeah. So that's actually my brother. He he said, um, you know, he was looking at some pictures of some some Little Rock OGs and he noticed that a lot of them have branding on their arm, you know, like the 23rd branding. Is that still a thing? And where does that come from? Um, that come from not affording to get a tattoo. (laughs) 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 
Yeah, the brandy, you know, stick, a stick pin, or you gonna get branded with the hanger? <laughs> uh, you know, the day a lot of day ones got the brand. Um, man, that's what that's where they come from, man. Mm. Not being able, not being able to afford the, the tattoo shit. <laughs> Damn, that's hilarious. Yeah, right now there's a 55 year old with the with the branding on his arm. Right now he's like, God damn it, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk to me about when when um, gangster rap first came out. You know, like when what was the first gangster rap song or or you know CD or CD? Wow, tape. Let's go tape that you heard. Uh, I used to like King T. Oh, from yeah. Compton. Yeah, yeah. I liked um, Ice T. Um, at six in the morning. Now let me ask you: but, uh, Were you playing this on the radio, or was these like tapes that people were getting? Because that's how I would get a lot of the tapes from down south. Is I, I had a family member that lived down south, and whenever he come, he would bring the tape of, you know, hey, this is this new dude named Mystical. He's dope as fuck. You need to listen to him. You know, is that how the right. tapes and stuff got to Little Rock, or were they actually playing hip hop in Little Rock back in the eighties? They was playing a bunch of New York shit. Yeah. Okay. Um, before the um. The L.A. rap, you know, N.W.A. came out for the gangster, gangster rap with when motherfuckers just really started paying attention. You know, uh, that other the King T didn't wasn't nobody really up on that. I was just in the hip hop anyway. Mm -hmm. But you know, Eve even made a motherfucker pay attention. Tupac and made a motherfucker pay attention. Yeah, uh, N.W.A. said fuck the police, and that's what we said. Fuck the police. You know what I mean? The nigga said do a drive-by. Shit, we are gonna go do the drive-by. That's what we listening to. Yeah. Nigga. I mean, you know, Damn. we even influence. Yeah. It, it had a lot to do with it. Even now, these youngsters listen to that shit. Oh, yeah. And, and they do shit. You know what I mean? So hip-hop, yeah. Yeah, man. You know? You're familiar with the Clips rap group. I was, um, yeah. I was, I was listening to an interview that Malice was doing, not Pusha T, Malice. And he said, mm -hmm. man, he said, he said, um, I wonder how many people died or went on drive-bys listening to our music. He said people used to always come up to him and just be like, yeah, man, I, I shot a motherfucker when I was listening to your song. And now, if, for anybody who doesn't know him, he's like a big-time Christian and shit, and he, he just left the rap game. But he's like, man, that made him be like, damn, I don't know if I should be doing this shit. Right, right, right. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's really still up to that individual. Of course, because I've li I grew up with it, and I, you know, it didn't make me go out and you know what I'm saying do that. So yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, but it's just an enhancement. Goes, yeah, it goes, yeah, yeah. No, there's, I'm sure. You know, when I listen to to, to gangster rap, is when I'm driving to my nine to five and I have my coffee on the side. It just stopped mm -hmm. at Starbucks. I turn that shit all the way up. I got my windows up. And I'm just mad that I got to go to work. So gangster rap is the best if you're sitting in traffic is all I'm saying. Right, right, right. <laughs> My man. Um, well, shit, I, I want to ask you, um, what what's your mission behind your music? You know what I'm saying? And your entertainment company and all that. What's the mission behind it? Yeah, just like, you know, besides green, I already know money is... is is obviously an end factor, but you know what? What's your mission statement? What What do you want to help accomplish with this? I just want to leave it to my daughter. Mm. That's, that's why I asked. That's, yeah, that's, I just want to be able to leave her something, and then she can leave her family something, and so on. You know, so the name can go on. That's it. Yeah, that's all I want. That's what it's all about. I didn't about. did everything else in life. You know. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm working hard for. I hold that to her. Because yeah. she's a great child. She's in the Air Force. She's graduated from high school, college. Mm. That's the only child I get. Nice. And she has no kids. So I owe these millions to her. That's dope, homie. And you know what? I can say I'm in the same boat. 42, one child. Thank God. He's mm -hmm. 21 years old. Made it through. He didn't go through a quarter of the dumb shit that I went through. And, you know, I'm right. just very blessed to have him, man. And I'm blessed to not have any more fucking kids, especially right now with this COVID mm -hmm. shit because kids are expensive. <laughs> so once I do that and get settled, uh, just put that in a bank account. Just take care of your daddy. That's what's up. Yeah, when I'm, si when I'm 75, don't put me in a home. <laughs> keep me in keep me, keep no, a little room no. up in the third, you know, even if it's the cold room in the yeah. back. You know what I'm saying? Just keep, it, keep me a young, a young breezy and a whole <laughs> bottle of bottle of There you go, homeboy. <laughs> 
That's my man, dude. <laughs> Buddha, man, it's always a pleasure talking to you, homeboy. Um, I definitely would love to do this every so me, often. Man. And I'm definitely going to promote your music and everything you have going on. And one more time, tell everybody where they can find you, man. They can find me in Little Rock, Arkansas, in the neighborhood. Neighborhood. You feel me? Just ask for the hood. There you ask go. Ask for Gargamel when you come to the city with the dirty fingernails. The dirty fingernails. Yeah, that means, that means my hands and everything. You hear me? <laughs> for sure, my man. Yeah. You have a safe night. Stay healthy and uh, all that during this coronavirus thing, man. You too, man. God bless. You too, homie. Peace.